We're here to talk about tourism security, about the policies that East Africa has in place as a region, and ultimately we'll be discussing ways to reassure the public that they're going to be looked after when they come to East Africa. Let's talk about what we're doing as a region. The East African region is very safe, it's very secure, because we are now all on alert, and so we should even have more people coming to the region than ever before, because now we are so alert. We, everybody is, is all up on their toes, is ensuring that they report on anything suspicious. The public is aware, the security forces are doing their work, our interstate security is working, and the, the network is strong. And I would also like to add that we are working on interconnecting the security uh, systems within the region so that if there is any small incident anywhere, the whole region gets to know immediately. And uh, the security alert is issued within the security system and in most cases the culprits are uh, arrested in immediately. Okay, so I'd really like to hear what individual countries are doing and, and what sort of reassurance you'd like to give the travelling public. Um, could we hear first of all from Tanzania? What Tanzania has done uh, in recent years, first of all, is to a, establish a dedicated unit within the police force. Uh, this is a diplomatic and uh, tourism unit uh, police force. And over the past uh, couple of years, the main task has been to equip the, uh, the officers uh, that are deployed to that unit with the necessary skills and, and technology. The police unit has dedicated uh, several hotlines, uh, telephone numbers that visitors would be able to call. They save that number, the hotline, on their cell phone so that it's within reach. As soon as they, they see something that's uh, suspicious, something that is, uh, may be threatening their security, they'll simply push a button. Kenya, um, obviously the world's eyes have been upon you and you also probably have the highest profile mm -hmm. uh, as a tourism <coughs> destination here in the UK. What steps are being taken now to perhaps reassure the public that Kenya is once again or will be a safe country to visit? As a country, it is, we are stable. We have, as a result of the recent uh, attacks at uh, Westgate, we have mobilized our entire forces, the, the internal police. We also have within the, the villages a major uh, the tourist uh, sort of uh, destinations. We have been able to enhance uh, security. We also have the a dedicated uh, police force that uh, deals with the uh, matters to do with the security for our visitors. And of course, within the various uh, parks where tourists normally visit with the, the tour buses, we have also have units deal with the uh, anti-poaching and they also deal with any kind of uh, security threat that uh, they can see. The government has also raised the general awareness that uh, we can have threats, uh, some of them, of course, external. One of the main reasons why we have ha been having some of these uh, issues is because of uh, the deployment of uh, the Kenyan security forces in Somalia. And the reason why we went to Somalia, of course, are well known. It was as a result of the Al-Shabaab forces themselves coming for tourists from Lamu. Mm -hmm. And as a result of which, of course, we had to make sure that uh, that kind of uh, situation must be brought to an end. Rwanda is another country that constantly, I think, is concerned about foreign travel advices and about reassuring people that it is a safe country, or at least it's a safe country, and you're, you're taking steps to make it so. Can you tell me a little bit about what's happening there? When I look at security, and maybe related to tourism, well, and the story of Rwanda that many uh, somehow still have in their minds, uh, the first element that the country did in order to develop was actually based on security. That was the, the most important element and ensuring that there was safety and that that would provide a confidence. Uh, today, yes, there's still some work to be done in terms of the, you know, the perception, I would say, 
Uh, but we've also seen a lot of uh, indexes that show that people actually feel very safe in Rwanda. And that's something that uh, is, is across the board. So whether it's uh, at, you know, at the district level, uh, households, both for the, the Rwandans and, uh, and also the visitors. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, we've seen a, a lot of uh, good, uh, good progress, notably in doing business, for example, which is uh, one of the, the, the recent ones we've seen last week, the World Bank uh, do, doing business report that puts us as the second best country to do business. So uh, in, in Africa after Mauritius, so I think and 32nd in the world. And, and to be able to achieve that, the first element has really been to reassure people. You can actually do business, it's safe. And, uh, and of course, it's a constant uh, work that people need to do. Of course, the travel advisories, as you, as you mentioned, is uh, still a challenge. Uh, we work very closely with the, 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 you know, the different embassies in the country. Um, when, as soon as a uh, travel advisory is issued or there is an issue, working closely with the embassies to actually have visits in some of the areas. I will give a particular example around the mountain gorillas where we've had that happen and where we've seen travel advisories being lifted up after a month, which is really record time because usually I think they tend to forget that the travel advisory had been put in place. But also working uh, with, with the region, I think has been actually one of the elements of uh, what has helped in security. Um, I'd like to invite the Minister of Tourism for Uganda just to tell me a little bit about just the type of things you're doing to keep people safe, but also persuade them that it is actually a relatively safe country to visit. In our country, we have established a unit, anti-terrorism police. It is specialized, well-trained, very alert, and we respond on the impulse. So that one is something that we can say with confidence that in Uganda, one has got to risk too much to try to try terrorism in that country. We have even gone further to make sure that we contain the insecurity situation in the places of origin, like being in Sudan, being in Congo and all that. So that also puts us at the forefront in making sure that the internal security is well catered for. We have what we call the tourism police. That is a new unit. Make sure that every hotel, every road, every place that accommodates tours is guarded, and that one is working perfectly. But we also have what we call the uh, game rangers. We have increased like, this year in April, we increased the number by 450 new recruits. That is to make sure that the parks are pacified so that nobody can enter without being noticed. And we have also introduced the intelligence network in the parks. We didn't have that one, but we have recruited people, trained them, to be able to detect anything going on within. And they mix with the ordinary people, you wouldn't know who is that. But we also use the communities surrounding the parks to make sure that they are trained in detecting anything that may go wrong. So that also helps us to get the communities being security conscious and making sure that they protect the industry because they benefit from it. Are you frustrated by travel advisory notices when the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, for example, puts out a, um, a blanket warning against travel to large parts of your countries. There are, of course, travel advisories that focus on given areas. If, for example, you are telling uh, uh, tourists to not visit certain sort of uh, slum areas, for example, or areas, say, just next to the Somali border, that can be, can be understood. But if you issue a general travel advisory, then you are helping to destroy the very country that was actually destroyed by that act of terrorism. During 9-11, we did not see any travel advisories. <laughs> Even in 1998, when the American embassy was destroyed uh, in Nairobi and we lost more than 300 Kenyans, uh, we never saw any travel advisories. So some of these advisories really should be avoided. We as tourism people need to issue correct, the correct information, work with the foreigners, uh, you know, uh, tourists and, and uh, uh, travel, travel writers. We work with them, bring them to the lo location. They enjoy their holiday, you know, beautiful experience. That shows the world that the travel advisory actually is false. Uh, the whole idea of, of tourism is actually being able to let people experience another country, another culture. That's the whole you know, idea of tourism and, and, and being able to, 
to, to learn and appreciate the cultures. Now, what the travel advisory does is basically telling you, do not go there. You don't want to know them. You know, so it, it's 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 quite it's quite unfortunate because you know it's as if on one hand we're promoting you know the, the fact that people need to get to know each other and that's actually the way of bringing peace, and then on the other, uh, you know, there's these tribal advisories that actually are promoting its opposite and basically. So I think it's very uh, uh, destructive. How optimistic are you that you will be? able to overcome the perception still, that do exist still, that your region is sometimes a dangerous place to visit? I think the, the best way to defeat the perception that uh, destination East Africa is unsafe is by encouraging a lot of uh, tourists uh, to visit the region. Because when they visit the region, they will see it for themselves that the region is extremely secure. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I'm also quite confident that uh, the perception will improve. Uh, I think the poor perception that has been existing is due to very poor communication. And with technology today and social media, uh, I think that gives a lot of confidence because there's indeed we we'll need to have more tourists. Word of mouth is probably the best marketing tool we've had. Uh, now with social media, we are able to tell our own stories, but more so the people who have come and who have actually experienced are able to share whether it's through videos to pictures or stories that they've experienced. And, uh, and I think technology has really been, uh, in my view, is really going to be the answer. Now people will know what is real and what is happening. And that's uh, the safety and the great experience that you will have in the region. And, and that makes us uh, quite confident uh, that the perception will improve.